Welcome to Cinema Chat. I'm Arnold Sean. And I'm Morgan Gard. And this week we'll be reviewing the new film Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. This is the adaptation of the first in a series of children's novels called Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and it centers around the origin story of our hero, Percy Jackson. Well, he's a demigod, the son of Poseidon, and it centers around him trying to find out who stole the lightning bolt, Zeus's legendary weapon, off Mount Olympus. The story, for the most part, kept me hooked in. Like, I never lost track of what was going on, for the most part, and I was kind of sucked into that story. It was well paced, it moves along at a good clip, even if the this plot structure is pretty much, well, we need to do this thing. Well, we need to find the three magical what's-its that get us to where's it, where we can finally do the magical thing. But it's pretty much just checkpoint, 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 ending. But it was organized. It, it, it did follow a very obvious pattern. Like, it was easy to follow. Well, that leads into another aspect, predictability. I mean, it's bad enough that it's based on poems and stories that are thousands and thousands of years old. It's just predictable from beginning to end. And even in scenes where I think some things are supposed to be surprises, anybody with a precursory knowledge of Greek mythology will find most of it spoiled. I mean, they walk into a greenhouse full of statues and instantly my mind clicked Medusa and it takes the characters who somehow, even though they have this great link to Greek culture and mythology, have no idea that a bunch of statues of Girl Scouts is anything but Medusa. But I kind of like that because uh, I myself am fairly familiar with Greek mythology and it was really interesting just how they wrote in each mythos with in, like trying to portray it in more modern times. I just really liked how you could kind of see where it was going, but still curious as to how they were going to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a movie about basically a war of the gods in Greek mythology. It stands to live or die on its special effects. And those, for the most part, are okay. A lot of things they do, you would never see in real life. So it's hard to imagine this is, this is what it would look like. Christopher Columbus really tried to make the centaur effect his own with the first Harry Potter film. But since then, somebody came along and did it much better. And thankfully, he learned his lesson. Uh, the centaurs in this film are very well done, practically seamless. Uh, and also, the main one is played by Pierce Brosnan, which is a huge plus in my book. It's hard to see him now as just a person. I really think he's a centaur. Here's something I want to stress about my opinion on this film. It's not a bad movie. I didn't dislike it. I was a little underwhelmed. I would have wished that it was something more, but it's not. And what is there is good. It's watchable. I'd see it in theaters, I think. It's worth it. It is just painfully mediocre. See, now, I think you're being a little too harsh. I would have to say I like the movie. I would see it in theaters with just a couple friends. I might even drag some friends along to see it with me. I give props to uh, Chris Columbus. Right, plus uh, babysitters, parents, they take their 10-year-olds this. You got a kid for the next month who won't say a word because he's too busy being at the library reading up on Greek mythology. This will definitely pique their interest. Okay, so I guess we're in agreement then. Go see it in theaters, right? Definitely. All right, great. That's it for this week's Cinema Chat. I'm Morgan Gard. And I'm Arnold Chan. We'll see you next time. Yeah.